Recorded live at Esto in Savannah, Georgia, this is Brand USA Talks Travel. Esto is the nation's premier annual educational and marketing event for destination marketing professionals. We've brought the podcast to Esto to keep you current with new trends and tools in the travel industry. Here's your host, Mark Lapidus. You've got tough choices to make every single day. Let's see, golfing, fishing, laying on the beach. How do you decide? I mean, don't tell anybody, but I've got the easiest job in the industry. I just get to invite people to Puerto Rico. I mean, the most challenging part for me is which experiences and, and which restaurants do you recommend? It truly is a beautiful destination, and it's such an honor and a privilege to be able to represent them. My listeners can probably guess who I'm speaking with today. My guest is Brad Dean. Brad is the CEO of Discover Puerto Rico. He's been there since 2018. Before that, he served as the CEO of Myrtle Beach in South Carolina, but not of the Myrtle Beach CVB there. You were at the Chamber of Commerce, which was a little unusual, right? Yeah, the chamber there had existed for about 75 years. It served as the destination marketing organization for decades, and it because the community was so integrated in and around tourism that they recognized that tourism is our industry, our industry is tourism. We don't need two entities. So it was great experience for me because I got to represent the entire business community, but I also got to lead the destination marketing organization. Is it still done that way anywhere else? Not very often. You see a few not too far from Savannah. Hilton Head uh, has one, but it, in most cases, it's a specialized tourism agency in Myrtle Beach. It's just because tourism was so incredibly important to the region that they felt like one plus one equals two, but pretty rare model. Brad was named State Tourism Director of the Year in 2021. That's fantastic. The shine is still in your face. Was it a surprise? It was a total surprise. I was relatively new to state tourism. Keep in mind, I took over the promotion of an island that had just come out of a major natural disaster and bankruptcy. So just the fact that we were on the radar was pretty cool. First time Puerto Rico had ever been recognized at that level. But what was really neat about it was two things. First of all, you're following some great state leaders. Chris Thompson, the CEO of Brand USA, is a great example. Uh, Dwayne Parrish in South Carolina. So many that have made their mark on this industry. And secondly, you're recognized by your peers, the people who are doing exactly what you're doing. And I think anytime you get recognized by your peers, it just means that much more. So I read from your bio that you were a financial analyst for GE in Puerto Rico. Is that how you made it to the island initially? I initially started out in Schenectady, New York, the single coldest place I had ever been. And after six months, they said, <laughs> we've got a job for you in Puerto Rico. And I said, right there, you had me at Puerto Rico. I'm going. And so I was actually a manufacturing financial analyst. But the job was I would go all around the island to take audits and inventory. And what I observed was this amazing island that had stories that had never been told. So it always kind of stuck with me. But this was a storyteller's opportunity. So fast forward 25 years later, when they were ready to take their tourism promotion out of government and privatize it, I raised my hand and said, I'm all in on this opportunity. It's funny how life is a wheel. You often wind up back in places you never thought you'd be again. Well, here's the amazing thing about Puerto Rico. My job as a financial analyst, sadly, was right about the time of NAFTA. So we were actually moving jobs out of Puerto Rico. And a few years later, I realized I was a part of this job loss. I felt kind of guilty. And now I'm coming back to the island and helping create jobs, and not just jobs, but careers in travel and tourism. My notes, Brad, say here that Discover Puerto Rico was named among Fast Company's world's most innovative companies. Tell me about that. Yeah, that was a really special honor for our team. Fast Company, of course, is a high-profile media organization. They looked worldwide at organizations they felt like were breaking through the clutter and doing something they hadn't seen before. And in our case, they saw a couple things. One is the emphasis on Live Boricua, which is not just simply an advertising campaign. Pain. It's a brand positioning built on the uniqueness of the people of Puerto Rico. And a lot of our advertising is elevating the faces of Puerto Rico amidst the places of Puerto Rico. Secondly, what they liked is we are a 100% digital marketer. And as a new organization, a relatively young organization, both in terms of years and age, a lot of 20-somethings and 30-somethings, they love the fact that we were just going tech first in just about everything we're doing. It was impressive enough to be named a list. Then you look at organizations like Airbnb, and you realize that you're really playing amongst the top. So we were honored to be recognized by Fast Company. How did you come up with the campaign? So Live Puerto Rico was an extension of what we had already been doing. We recognized that what really differentiates Puerto Rico is not the beaches and the golf courses. I mean, we got beautiful beaches, but telling the world we've got beaches is kind of like Las Vegas saying we've got casinos. And so what we recognize, what really differentiates Puerto Rico is 500 plus recorded years of history and this rich, vibrant culture that comes from a fascinating fusion of Spanish, African, and Taino Native American heritage. And you 
see it in the art and the architecture, you hear it in the music, and you most certainly taste it in the food. So we leaned into that pre-pandemic. Coming out of the pandemic, the research told us that travelers wanted more meaningful travel experiences, travel with a purpose, if you will. And a lot of credit to our CMO, Leah Chandler, she identified to the research that the audience that we were speaking to were people that don't just live to travel, they travel to live. So we leaned heavy into that, and out of it came a unique opportunity that's completely ownable by Puerto Rico. No other island in the Caribbean can offer the Live Puerto Rico experience. And a lot like what Brand USA has done, where you can have some of the experiences we offer, but only the USA version here, you can only live Puerto Rico in Puerto Rico. And so for us, it's about elevating Puerto Rico. It's not just a great place to visit, but come and enjoy what it's really like to live in our paradise. Leah told me also that it's resonated very well with Puerto Ricans. You know, it's interestingly enough, the Puerto Ricans on the island and off the island have embraced this like no other campaign I've ever seen. Now, on one level, you say, well, it's the Puerto Rico, they should. But hey, as we all know in this industry, your locals sometimes are your biggest critics. And so just because you roll out a campaign that identifies them doesn't mean they like it. They have absolutely been off the charts in not just celebrating the campaign, but amplifying it. And we believe the Boricua in the United States mainland, whether by birth or by heritage are some of our best ambassadors. One of the trends I've noticed in travel these days is that destinations are caring more and more about what their cities and states think about them. You know, before things were done in a vacuum and we're at this point post-pandemic where everybody is analyzing everything, one of the things I think people are rethinking is, how does my city really feel about me and what I'm doing? You know, if you really are committed to being a marketer with genuineness and authenticity, you simply have to be aligned with your local community. And as you say, a lot of times that might have been done in a vacuum. And I think it's exciting because not only does it challenge us to dig deeper in the community, it forces you to broaden out your reach. The other thing is it gives us a seat at the table that in many cases tourism leaders have not had. And, you know, in the, in the political world, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. So what this is doing is putting us in a position to be not just destination market but community leaders. Some of us were already doing that. Others have had to learn. And one of the things I've seen in the pandemic is that some of the brightest stars, the people that are outperforming expectations, weren't necessarily the usual suspects you thought. But there's one common identifier, whether it's a big city, a small rural market, an urban market, whether they're big budget, small budget, they're really ingrained and aligned with their community. And that extends through the brand. Speaking of leadership, Brad, you've had to lead Puerto Rico through some really tough natural disasters. And unfortunately, we have this really sad thing that's just happened in Hawaii. What have you learned from those experiences? Our hearts go out to our friends in Hawaii, having lived through similar situations and, and not just in Puerto Rico, Myrtle Beach, between tropical storms, hurricanes, wildfires, and of course, bankruptcy in Puerto Rico. We're no stranger to adversity, so we can empathize with what they're going through. But here's the takeaway for me. A couple of things you find out. Number one is oftentimes crisis presents opportunities. And not only will they build back, but they'll build back bigger, better, smarter. Secondly, recovery almost always happens quicker than you think. I was sharing with my colleagues from Hawaii on Saturday, and they're feeling the, the challenge, but I said, trust me, as you're down and coming back, there is going to be pent up demand. And Stephen Perry from New Orleans told me this. I was asking him, how did you come back from Katrina? He said, the minute we said we're ready, there were visitors ready to come back. So travel is a transformative tool, especially coming out of a crisis, but how you respond and react in that crisis is important. The other thing I found as a leader is it's incredibly important to liberate your people and everybody on your team has a role in recovery, but the role is usually a little different post-crisis than pre-crisis. So it's finding out who the right people are on the bus, making sure they're in the right seat, setting them free and making sure that you do two things as a leader. Number one, set clear expectations. And number two, you have to be willing to over-communicate. You simply cannot over-communicate post-crisis. And if you're willing to do that, your people will respond, your community will respond, and the visitors will be ready to come back when you're ready for them. One of the questions I like to ask all my guests on the podcast, Brad, is as you talk to other state tourism directors, what are you hearing? What are the trends here this year at ESTO? A couple of things I'm hearing, uh, one from just about everyone, and we heard it today several times, is the last two, three years have been some of the most challenging for us, but also some of the most rewarding. I think it's forcing a lot of us to double down on what we know we have to do, but also open our minds and invite and welcome new ideas. So that's number one. Number two is that, wow, there is this blistering pace of disruption and technology infusion, which of course is redefining not only what we do, but how we do it. At the end of the day, 
the one thing that still resonates with everyone, regardless of whether you're a state tourism director representing a small destination market or a, a large market, a brand USA, is that human connection. I think travel is one thing that is so special because you know we travel wherever we might go to see things we haven't seen, meet people we haven't met, experience experiences that we've never experienced, and yet we walk away with two things: great memories and a reminder that there's a lot more that unites us as people than divides us. And I think that human connection that's so integrated in what we do and why we do what we do still resonates through all the technology. Now, that said, the world is getting faster and faster and faster, and the pace of change for a lot of us who have been in the industry for a while is challenging, but it's also invigorating. And so for a lot of my peers and myself included, it's embracing that and recognizing that we're still in the high-touch industry. It's just high-touch with high-tech that's infusing a lot of the change. Well, I think more than most industries, I don't want to say the travel industry is bulletproof when it comes to artificial intelligence, but certainly you still have to travel to have the experience. So we're never going to eliminate that part of it. That's the whole business. Exactly. At the end of the day, that's the essence of why we're doing what we're doing. We just have to be able to adapt and evolve how we go about it. Before we go, I want to talk about how travel transforms people. You know, for me, that's really why I've maintained a career in travel and tourism. This is the one industry I've worked for where it changes lives and changes communities, and you get to see that and be a part of it. And I've seen it in every community I've been in, but especially in Puerto Rico. When I think about where we were five years ago and where we're at today, it's creating not just jobs, but careers. It's helping nurture progress. And it also stokes that civic pride because we're connecting people with what really makes them special and makes their community differentiated. Whether you're representing a small city, a business, a, a nation, as in Brand USA, we get to help nurture that progress and put that transformative power to work. And listen, nobody does that better than Brand USA. And I've seen from the two destinations I've worked in, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and Puerto Rico, neither of which were known as international destinations. What Brand USA has done is opened up opportunities and platforms for us that we couldn't have otherwise done. And I remember the days when we were lobbying for Brand USA, and we would tell our members of Congress what this could someday become. And it has so eclipsed and exceeded our expectations. So I'm on one level. I'm a, like a, a proud parent of this organization that played a tiny role in helping create it. On the other hand, I am a very grateful recipient of the benefit of what Chris Thompson and the entire Brand USA team has not only done, but continue to do as they lead us out of the worst crisis ever. And I think usher us into what I believe will be the best days of travel and tourism, which lie before us, not behind us. Brad, it's very kind of you to say that. And believe me, folks, I didn't slip any money under the table. There was no 20s exchanged. He said that of his own free volition. So thank you very much much, yes. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you today, Brad. I really appreciate you taking out the time here at Esto in Savannah. Well, thanks for being at Esto, and thanks for what you're doing to help promote our nation. Our pleasure. I'm Mark Lapidus. That's Brand USA Talks Travel for today. Thanks for listening. Engineering, Brian Watkins. Production and music from Asher Mirovich. If you enjoyed this live from Esto episode, please share it with your friends in the travel industry. Safe travels.